What's up, everybody? Welcome into Dodger Heads, presented by DodgerBlue.com, part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network. My name is Jeff Spiegel, joined today by Daniel Kim, holding up a Tommy Lasorda bobblehead, Hyunjin Ryu jersey behind him. Daniel is a KBO insider who you may have seen come across your timeline this week, breaking a little bit of news as it relates to the Dodgers. So, Daniel, before we get into all of that, uh, how are you? How, how's, how's life treating you on the other side of the pond? Well, it's uh, hot summer here in Korea right now. Uh, we're talking about triple digits in terms of the temperature, hot and humid. But uh, KBO season, it's uh, uh, it's going well right now. And Hyunjin Ryu uh, with the Blue Jays now, uh, he came back. Uh, he pitched well a couple of days ago. So, uh, so much baseball going on in Korea right now. I love it. I love it. And I've been there. And when you say triple digits, the emphasis should be on the humidity because it's right. not just 100 degrees. It probably feels like... It's about 120. But the reason that I asked you if you could come on our show is because you posted on Twitter that the Dodgers are on the verge of signing a Korea Korean phenom. Hyun Suk Jong is projected to be the number one overall pick in the KBO draft if he were to enter it. So you report that according to several of your sources that the Dodgers are on the verge of signing him, that he will not enter into the draft. So why don't you walk me through a little bit about the report and then we can dive into the type of player we're talking about here. Well, uh, it's been pretty much about a year or so that we've been following Zhang closely. Uh, he's having his senior season uh, with his uh, Yongma High School right now. Uh, he pitched a couple of days ago, I believe. So he's in his uh, in, in the middle of his season right now. But he uh, kind of uh, took off uh, last year as a, a junior in high school. Uh, his velo shot up quite a bit. Uh, in the middle of the season, that's when uh, KBO scouts and Major League uh, scouts started paying attention to his stuff. Uh, he's uh, just like you said, he was supposed to be the number one overall pick had he entered into this year's uh, KBO draft. But uh, he just uh, announced uh, last week that he's going to sign with an MLB organization. He didn't specifically say which team yet, but... Uh, he just didn't want to go into KBO draft and get drafted and all of a sudden uh, sign with an uh, MLB organization that would put the KBO league team in a bad spot. So he just made an announcement. So we're expecting him to sign with an MLB organization uh, sometime next couple of weeks, uh, if not this week. But So I've been following the situation quite a bit and I spoke to a few uh, people uh, and uh, I was just told that Dodgers were the front runners, but it all came down to, as you know, international pool money. Uh, there are limits to as to what each organization could spend in this market. So uh, we weren't quite sure. I mean, I knew that there were a lot of teams that were interested, but at this time of the year, teams just didn't have money to spend. Yeah. So I think it came down to uh, uh, getting the enough space in their international pool money to sign. Chang and uh, last time I checked, which was this morning, our time, uh, Dodgers are the still front runner runners, and the official announcement should be coming sometime soon. Okay, well, it's important to note the the international free agency things that you've alluded to. So, for the unfamiliar, um, basically from January through December fifteenth is when the international free agency signing period happens. Um, each team is allocated a certain amount of money. You can actually trade that money, which is sort of a newer thing. But the Dodgers and most teams do all of their work years and years ahead of time so that by the time the signing period actually opens, it's just a formality. So a month ago, the Dodgers had done all their work. They had something like $6,000, I think, as of right. June 11th remaining. But a, a move that fell under the radar for 99% of people, but I imagine not for you, was the Dodgers making a trade with the Chicago White Sox, sending two prospects in exchange for international free agency pool money. Now, hmm. the report didn't say how much, but some folks, um, Dodger fans, did a little digging, Josh Thomas, and he found out that the White Sox at last look had about $1.4 million remaining, which just so happens to be roughly in the ballpark of what it might take to sign a player of the caliber we are talking about. So as you kind of connect all these dots, was that the last domino that needed to fall for the Dodgers to become the front runners here is, is just acquiring that money to be able to pay him kind of what he could expect to have earned? Yes and no. Um, uh, I, and I say that because 
Uh, last year, we went through a similar situation with a pitcher named uh, Shim Jun Sok. He eventually signed with Pittsburgh Pirates, but his signing wasn't announced until January 15th of this year. So they actually had some sort of an agreement uh, sometime this uh, sometime uh, this time around last year, and then they waited until the international pool money became available. So we knew that that was going to be a possibility, uh, but... Uh, you know, it's it's one thing to have an agreement, verbal agreement, and having to wait six yeah. months. You know, that's you know, it doesn't feel safe. So I knew that uh, I was paying attention to the international uh, pool money being traded. At some point, right before the trade deadline, Texas Rangers actually traded for some money as well, and then uh, they actually traded that money back to Pittsburgh Pirates. So I was kind of looking into the. the uh, pirates um, possibility, but I spoke to some people uh, here in Korea and they tell me that Dodgers really want this uh, pitcher and that they're going to do whatever they, whatever that is necessary within their power to try to sign this player. And uh, when I saw the trade that you just uh, mentioned and uh, I was pretty much confident that it was about to happen. So, I mean, I don't mean to push you on this. Does it feel like from your perspective that it's a mere formality that that he that this hasn't been made official between the Dodgers and this player? Uh, well, until the team announced uh, until the team makes an official announcement, nothing is official as you you and I know. Um, but I spoke to several people and they basically told me that, you know, it's pretty much a done deal. OK, um, so I'm pretty sure they need to actually sign the papers, but uh, barring any big late minute, uh, some crazy changes, I think uh, announce should be coming anytime soon. Okay. And the other yeah. piece, before we get into the specific player, which I'm sure people are waiting for, is <laughs> that the rules have changed a little bit. Folks might be thinking back to when Shohei Otani came over and there were different rules in place at that time. Nowadays, you have to wait until the age of 25, basically, before under the age of 25, outside of the United States and Canada, you are subject to this system. And so that's what kind of makes this one unique. There's not really, I mean, there is a bidding war, but the dollars, there's no posting fee because he's not on a roster. It, it's a, Can you walk through maybe some of the differences between other players that have come over from Korea um, and, and how this is playing out? Because it does seem to be tangibly different. Right. Uh, it's, uh, well, uh Chang is a high school senior right now, so he's uh, he's an amateur. When Hyunjin Ryu signed with the Dodgers, he was uh, 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 he was well into his professional career with Hanwha Eagles. So posting was a process that he had to go through. It was it's became it's, it's basically between KBO and MLB. Uh, so that's a whole new different ball game. But uh, he's basically an international free agent. I I would. I mean, that's the way I would look at him. Okay. So a whole new different process. Uh, he could have signed with anyone, uh, whether uh, whether the Pittsburgh Pirates or the Dodgers, I think. So the process itself is, is a little bit different from uh, professional players like uh, Hyunjin Ryu or ha Sung Kim with the uh, San Diego Padres. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. let's talk about the player here. Uh, Hyun Suk Jung, he's 19 years old, six foot three. 97 mile an hour fastball reportedly three other pitches talk me through just how special this guy is um well from, from mm -hmm. your perspective well i follow kbo on a day-to-day -day basis uh, so i only got to see him in person pitch once so okay. let me make that clear i don't follow high school baseball uh on a day-to-day -day basis but i've heard so much things about him that i had to kind of make a trip for myself and i actually got to see him pitch and and on the day that i saw him pitch he was pretty good and but let me just say that he's still a high school senior yeah uh he still needs to go through the development but one thing that i noticed is that uh considering that he's a high school senior his secondary stuff looked well advanced compared to some of the other high school seniors um, I'm not saying that he's ready for a major league game or yeah. that he's uh, ready to join major league rotation, but his secondary stuff looked really good. You uh, mentioned Velo. Uh, about a year ago, he was sitting in 91, uh, low 90s. And sometime after, towards the end of the season, it shot up to uh, 96, 97-ish. So 
Uh, I think that he went through some training. Uh, there's no drive line here in Korea, but there's something similar uh, training okay. facilities here. I think that's where he trained. And that's one of the reasons why his velo just shot up quite a bit within just a few months. So that was an eye-opening, um, I guess, result. That's when KBO League teams and MLB uh, Major League Scouts were like, whoa, where is this coming from? And that's when he started gaining a lot of attention. And uh, yeah, you mentioned his tall 6'3", uh, uh, fastball in the uh, high uh, uh, upper, upper 90s, uh, better secondary stuff. I spoke to a Major League Scout about his uh, secondary stuff. And one thing that I heard was uh, his sweeper is pretty good. Okay. at this point so i'm sure it's not major league ready yet at this point but yeah. uh, he's well advanced in terms of developing new pitches and having secondary stuff and uh you know he's uh, he's healthy uh he's tall he's strong uh, he's very uh, i could i could see just the way he uh very emotional very competitive i could tell that right away um so i think that uh you Dodgers, if they do actually sign him, uh, getting a really good potential, um, high quality, uh, very competitive uh, young pitcher. The sense that you get from talking to people in Korea who, who, to your point, have seen him more. Is this like, hey, he's the best high school senior this year? Or is this a guy they're saying like, hey, we haven't seen something like this in three years, five years, ten years? Um, he would have been a number one pick overall. There's no question. Uh, and we did actually see another, the high school, uh, talent is getting a lot better in Korea right now. Uh, I mentioned Shim Jun Sok, uh, who signed with the, uh, Pittsburgh Pirates last year, went through the same pro pretty much the similar process. Okay. He was a high velo guy, a uh, very similar, uh, height, uh, upper nineties. He just started his professional career with the Pirates organization. There was another pitcher two years ago, number one overall pick, another high velo guy. Uh, he's actually uh, ended up staying in Korea. He's in okay. uh, KBO. He's going to probably win Rookie of the Year this year. So um, have uh, there have been some um, uh, highly touted uh, high school pitching prospects coming out. One a year, pretty much. Okay. So uh, I think uh, Zhang uh, pretty much falls in the same category. But out of the three, I spoke to Major League Scouts, and they all told me, I spoke to three scouts, and they all told me that Zhang is the best out of the three. So Wow. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And, and as somebody who covers the KBO and probably can has perspective and context into the types of things we're talking about, I know the first question I'm going to get it's a totally inappropriate question for me to ask you, Daniel, but it's the question that every person watching this, 50% of them are probably asking, which is how long, how long until this is a guy who could potentially contribute at the major league level. And well, I, I try and remind people that it, it think about the high school seniors, the Dodgers okay. draft high school seniors in the MLB draft. And, and a lot of times those guys are four or five years, you know, at minimum sometimes <laughs> away from the major leagues, let alone high A, double A, that kind of thing. Um, is Jong feel like we should just think of him as a first, second, third ish round MLB draft high school senior? Um, I would say if this signing goes through, if I were a Dodger fan, I would probably think like this uh, Dodgers are getting an extra second, third, or fourth round pick. Okay. Um, so it was it's just kind of like take it as if uh, another uh, a draft pick. In the higher round, uh, how long would it take? Nobody knows. <laughs> yeah. and you know, you know, you know how these things work. But Dodgers totally. have a uh, pretty, really good, impressive uh, development system. So, if he goes through the Dodger system, if everything goes well, if he stays healthy, uh, I'm sure. Uh, but you know, as you know, I mean, nobody yeah. knows. <laughs> nobody knows. Yeah, One nobody last knows. question, and yeah. and you kind of hinted at it here. Yeah. Um, the other thing that that I'm asking is, what do you think the incentive is for Zhang to come over now? Um, obviously, the alternative feels like waiting until you're 25, which is basically the length of what his rookie deal would be. And so to avoid the international rook free agent system, like, you know, and, and to be able to sign a big contract in Major League Baseball, he has to wait until he's 25, or in this case, it would be somewhere closer to 26, going through service time and that kind of thing. But what do you think the incentive is for him to come over now? 
Um, I follow him on Instagram. If you look at his uh, all the accounts that he's following, he's you could tell right away that uh, he's paying attention to what is happening in the United States in terms okay. of baseball. Uh, so I think that um, staying in KBO uh, would have been another pretty good route, I think. Uh, I think it's considered safer because of the cases like Hyunjin Ryu and Ha Song Kim. They went through the KBO route. But I think that uh, he wants to go to the best possible organization, uh, wants to work with the best possible coaches. I can't speak for himself, but that's the impression that I got. Yeah. And he sees what's going on in the United States, whether it's driveline, pitch design, uh, all the available high technology. I think he's very interested in that. Uh, judging from uh, who he's following on Instagram. So I think he wants to experience, he wants the best possible uh, uh, process and he wants to go to the United States, playing the best uh, available organization, uh, compete with the uh, highest talent in his age group. And I think that's what the Dodgers are giving him. And Dodger organization, as you probably know, is the most popular baseball major league baseball organization in korea so there's familiarity yeah uh los angeles area as you know uh, k-town is pretty much under the city of korea so there's comfort in that so i think everything just comes together for him he could have made a lot of money here in korea being a first overall pick but i think um high risk high reward so i think uh, he's ready for the challenge would he succeed nobody knows what's going to happen in the future but i think he's feels comfortable uh, with the uh, decision choice that he's about to make. I love it. Well, Daniel, we appreciate your time. Where can folks find you? I know you've got a channel and that kind of thing. So plug away. All my stuff is in Korean other than my Twitter account. So you can just follow me on Twitter at, well, it's called X now, right? So <laughs> Daniel <laughs> yeah. W, uh, you can okay. follow me. I post uh, KBO stuff and some Major League Baseball stuff, but uh, that's the only English uh, I guess, social media account that I have. I do have okay. my YouTube channel, but it's all in Korean. So I don't want to, you know, okay. I don't want to put it out there, but. Well, hey, po people should probably start following you now because Dodgers Padres in South Korea to start next year. I'm sure you're uh, you're among many people that are pretty excited about that. Although with ha -Sung Kim playing for the Padres, I'm slightly afraid to ask which team you might be rooting for in that matchup. Well, obviously, uh, I, um, I'll be frank with you. I'm a Mets fan. Okay. So uh, I, there's no way I'm going to be rooting for uh, Padres or Dodgers. Please, nah, nah, uh, that's just impossible for me. But I'll be okay. excited to see um, uh, an actual uh, regular season game here in Korea. There's yeah. so many Dodger fans. And let me tell you, uh, I don't know whether Dave Roberts is uh, aware of this or not, but there's so many uh, Korean Dodger fans here in Korea that are upset with Dave Roberts right now. So, <laughs> well, about what? I mean, it's like on one hand, I want to say join the party because I think half of the people watching this hate Dave Roberts. But what are they mad about? Uh, you know, pitching decisions oh, okay. and you know bullpen usually. And I mean, from 2013 through 2019, Dodger games were on national TV. All the Dodger games, every national, uh, every game were on TV. So. Uh, there are a handful of games that are being still being aired. I would say three to four games a week here in Korea. So yeah. uh, there are definitely Dodger presence here. And uh, same thing um, as as it is in LA. Uh, you know, it, 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 the fans are not happy with uh, pitching decisions or some of the lineup decisions that manager makes. But that's you know that's how all we are as baseball fans, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I I mean I started to share this story right before we started, but. I remember being in Korea and I was walking through a building with a bunch of rooms that people were living in. And as we walked past one, I saw a baseball game on a major league baseball game. And I was like, oh, and that was like two random teams. I was like, why are they playing a Texas Rangers game? And then I was like, oh, Shinsu Chu is on this team. And right. it was like, oh, everything makes sense. And people, I mean, to your point, everything baseball there is a huge deal as we saw during COVID specifically with the KBO. I mean, I got in on the KBO for a little while, so it's uh, it's awesome stuff. So I am excited as somebody who's been to Korea, who loves Korea and who knows how much they love baseball. I am super pumped for major league baseball to be being played there. The fact that it's the Dodgers to your point and the legacy that they have with Chan Ho Park and Hyunjin Ryu among many others is, uh, is super exciting. So 
Daniel, thank you again for your time today. Uh, hopefully this thing gets finalized. We get pen to paper and, uh, and Dodger fans can rejoice a little bit, even if it's knowing they got to wait three, four five years before we see this guy in the major leagues. Well, it's uh we're looking forward to, um, to the official announcement. I hope it happens. And, uh, uh, although I'm a Mets fan, I would love to see another Korean pitcher pitching at Dodger Stadium. So many memories for Korean fans here uh, when it comes to Dodger Stadium. So hope to uh, see another one anytime, uh, sometime in the near future. I love it. I love it. Well, everybody, thanks for joining us here. As always, you can subscribe, ring the notification bell here. Check out our podcast, Dodger Heads, on Apple, Spotify, Google as well. That is Daniel. I am Jeff. Enjoy the rest of your day. And as always, go Dodgers.